then we have this is, this is the inside. an expat living and working in Odessa, Ukraine. And today I want to show you the best traditional Ukrainian dishes and restaurants in the city. If you're coming to Ukraine as a tourist or you're uh, moving here as an expat, one of the first things you would like to check out is the cuisine. What are the traditional unique dishes that make this place? Well, this place. So I'm gonna take you to um, the top three restaurants that in my opinion showcase Ukrainian cuisine best. Although you can go to any restaurant and they would serve you some sort of Ukrainian dishes, I do think these ones are the best. Well, come along now! are at Nash restaurant which is on the Arcadia promenade in a very touristic region. The restaurant opened maybe one year, one year and a half ago and since then it's been one of the best places for modern Ukrainian cuisine. What is modern Ukrainian cuisine you will ask? Well I'm not really sure. They say they have a twist on traditional dishes and we are going to try it uh, right now. As of now we got our drinks. We ordered some homemade kvass. And also on the house, we got two alcoholic drinks. I have a Vishnyovka, and Eugene got uh, the apple and cinnamon drink. And I should say that all of them are just fantastic. Oh, and obviously bread with some lard. This is also on the house, just to create more appetite before uh, the main dishes come. Nash restaurant is different from all the other traditional restaurants because it has a very minimal decor. It's very airy, it doesn't have a lot of stuff going on, the walls are white and it really allows you to focus on the cuisine, on the conversation. Um, it has a very uh, airy and pleasant feeling about it. That's why it's attracting more of a modern crowd. The first dish that we got is Akroshka. This is a typical cold Russian soup that has gained a lot of popularity in the Ukraine. That's why I included it in the list. And usually you have a choice of a cold soup based on kvass or based on uh, kefir, which is sour milk, and we chose sour milk. Inside of it there are a plethora of fresh vegetables like radishes, cucumbers, green onions, dill, also meat. This is rabbit in a sour cream sauce with potatoes some greens uh, baked in the oven and covered with bread. So I am going to try to open it. Oh, so hot. It's steaming hot. I can see the rabbit, I can see the potatoes and the cream. The dish is very satiating, very delicious. This is, a, I think, a traditional dish in the sense that you would cook something like this at home in the village. Potatoes are really soft, really tender, and the meat is just superb. Also, all of this bread comes off. You can take it like this. There is a lot of leftover broth, just here. And I like pouring it on the bread and indulging. Mm. We are finally tasting one of the most beloved traditional dishes, which are galutsi. This is basically a rice and meat and some uh, vegetables like carrots, onions, filled inside of um, vine leaves or in this. Um, case cabbage leaves. They're also in a carrot, tomato and onion sauce. Let me just show you how they look. So this is this is the inside. It's slightly sweet from the carrot and the onion and a little bit tangy from the tomato. 
we obviously eat it with some sour cream because by now you know that sour cream makes everything better in Eastern Europe. Mm. This is so, so, so delicious. Overall, we had five Galoop team and we split it perfectly in between me and Eugene. Eugene got three, I got two. Everybody's happy and the dish is really, really delicious. Next time when you, when you are in Ukraine, I really recommend you try this one. We are done with our meal. We got our receipt. And overall, we spent 422 grivnias for two people. Honestly, we are super full. Uh, the soup akroshka is 89 grivnias. Galupsi 89 grivnias. Uh, the uh, hair in sour cream sauce with potatoes is the most expensive dish, 169 grivnias. Uh, one liter of kvass, the drink that we are having, is 75 grivnias. And uh, yeah, everything else was on the house. So for 122, we are probably leaving around 20 30 grivnias for tips. stop is the Kumanets restaurant. This is one of the most recommended places to taste the Ukrainian cuisine in the city. But then what is cuisine in Odessa? First of all we have the typical traditional Ukrainian dishes that we are going to taste here but also there is something known as the local cuisine. And then there's some um, uh, appetizer on the house. It looks like something made of pork fat, <laughs> which would not surprise me because it's Ukrainian cuisine. Oh my god, I'm salivating. So there's this concept of Ukrainian cuisine, basically traditional dishes that you can taste anywhere in the Ukraine. And there's something known as Odessa cuisine. Now Odessa is a very young city and nevertheless, due to the fact that it's a seaport, it's a multicultural place with a lot of influences from other cultures. Uh, before the Second World War, Odessa had a very thriving Jewish population and I think it really influenced the type of dishes that they prepare here. And the second biggest influence is obviously the sea with so much seafood and fish um, and uh, you know exotic things that were coming to the port. It truly really shaped the way in which Ukrainians eat here. We ordered two soups. I have a Ukrainian borscht. This is actually one of the trademarks of Ukrainian cuisine. It's a beetroot soup, thus the really bright red color. Oh, it smells amazing. The garlic scent. You can actually see it's soaked in oil and garlic. It's amazing. And Eugene got himself something related more to the Odessa cuisine. It's a soup from fish called uha and it has different um, seafood and types of fishes, very typical um, of Odessa. And finally we got our amazing platter with meat. Look at this beauty. So I'll go with the first one. This is the Ukrainian pride. Ukrainian salad, which is basically just a piece of fat, but it's so delicate, it's so soft, it melts in your mouth. This is pachirovak, and then this is um, a chicken neck with, I think, mushrooms. Then we have a salami from blood, and then we have a basin type of salami. They are served with some garlic and then with some very, very dark bread just like this and I'm ready to dig in to all of this
homely feel, uh, very relaxed. In terms of prices, it's more democratic than maybe the other places that you can uh, uh, come to in Odessa. And I've decided to uh, give you a good snapshot of different traditional Ukrainian dishes that are served here. I went with uh, three staples. Number one, I ordered green bush, zirony bush. This is more of a springtime meal, a springtime soup, uh, because it has a lot of greens. My mom used to make it, especially during springtime. I was always complaining that I don't want to eat it. Uh, so now it's interesting how I came back to, to the soup, but um, it's very refreshing. It has potatoes, it has boiled eggs, it has sometimes pieces of meat, and it has a lot of very fresh and very juicy herbs. And um, they always say in Eastern Europe that everything is better with sour cream, so you would see that different soups when they are served, there's always a spoonful of sour cream. I can see that they used very young potatoes, and due to that, taste of the potato is almost creamy together with the eggs and the sour cream and the chicken soup is just amazing a very very smooth and mild taste I am very much impressed by this soup <laughs> the Sun is killing me I think I'll have to switch places in a couple of minutes because it's it's too much and this is Vareniki I feel that every self-respecting nation has their own version of dumplings and in Ukraine it's vareniki. Um, vareniki are usually filled with uh, vegetable filling, so potatoes, uh, cabbage. Uh, this ones that I have are actually filled with um, potatoes and with liver just to give it a little bit of taste and I have two kind of sauces I have classical sour cream because everything is better with sour cream and I have a mushroom um, sour cream sauce which is a little bit more umami tasting from the get going mushrooms are just fantastic mm. oh and almost forgot to tell you what I'm drinking this is kampot it's um, a beverage made of summer fruits, so there's some raspberry, sour cherry, strawberry, probably some apples, uh, a little bit of sugar, and a lot of water. We don't really drink colas or soft drinks in Eastern Europe. Um, drinking Coca-Cola is a very modern trend, maybe last 10 or 20 years. I couldn't leave the place without indulging in something very sweet and decadent. And for dessert, I chose another traditional Ukrainian dish, which is called Mlinci, or uh, in Russian, Nalisniki. It looks like this. These are very thin pancakes, filled with apple with cinnamon, and then powdered with some sugar, and drizzled with caramel syrup. I cannot wait to dig into this. It looks amazing. I'm pretty full from the two dishes that I had before but I just had to indulge my sweet tooth with something very delicious. The sun has completely invaded my table, so I've decided it's time to go. Overall, for this meal, I paid around 363 grivnias, uh, plus 15% um, tips. I got two glasses of kompot, which were uh, 70 grivnias, and then um, the vareniki were 110, uh, the green borscht was 88 grivnias, and then the dessert, the uh, thin pancakes with apples were 95 uh, grivnias. Overall, a very accessible food and also very delicious, and I feel like I have to run from here because it is becoming unbearable. <laughs>